Oh, hi. What's up? What's up? Good morning, sunshines. There is probably an easier way. Hi, hello, I'm the Cyber Grief Guru. Thank you so much for watching. So what do they say? Necessity is the mother of invention? Well, that's what you have right here. So if you've been watching this channel for a while, you will know that I got the Ortor laser not so long ago, about a year or so ago. And then I got the Atom Stack and I also got the Monport K40. And so I need a place to store all of them. And let's just say the dining room was no longer a viable option when we're having friends and family over for Thanksgiving. So I had to quickly build a stand for all of the laser cutters, get them out of the house, get them in a place that they deserve to be in their sort of forever home. And so that's what you have here. I have spent the last couple days, actually a day and a half or so, building this stand for the two laser engravers and the laser cutter. Obviously the Mon Port is not here right now. It is stashed away in a closet, but uh, we will get it in its rightful home soon enough. So what I would like to do for this video is walk you through the process it took me to build this very quickly using absolutely nothing but the things that I already had in my shop because I was pressed for time and I wasn't really expecting to build this right now. It was on my to-do list. It was just not something that I was looking to do right away. So I use nothing but what we have in the shop. And so here we have it. We have the cabinet with the frame. It's got a lovely top. It's got two shelves that you can pull out with the laser engravers. And I think it turned out really well. So let's go ahead, let's cut over to the build montage. And then we'll wrap this video up with my thoughts on what I would do different if I had to do it over again. All right, let's get on with it. As with all builds, I started by getting the machines into place. Then I started rummaging around my wood storage locations for enough wood for this project. Fortunately, I had just enough wood with just a little bit left over. For this project, you will need a sheet of plywood for the shelf bottoms, two by fours for the frame, casters for mobility, a brad nailer, pocket hole jig, screws, drills, and drawer slides for the shelves. I started by milling down the two by fours to a common dimension to clean up the faces. Then I cut each piece to their final length. Then I flattened one side with the jointer and flattened the other side with the planer. Why go through this trouble? First, it's good practice. Secondarily, it makes assembly a lot easier when all of the lumber is the same size and square. I added some pocket holes to the stretchers and then moved on to the assembly. I used parallel clamps to align the boards and ensure they don't move when I screw them together. I started using fine pitch screws, but they were stripping out, so I switched to coarse threaded screws, which helped tremendously. After assembling both sides and checking for square, I moved on to assembling the stretchers that the slides will attach to for the shelves. To fully assemble the frame, I placed it on a piece of plywood and then used some parallel clamps again for alignment. I then attached the pocket hole screws and moved on to the other side as well. Next, I measure the frame and then cut the tabletop to the exact dimensions. In this case, I'm using 3 quarter inch plywood. To attach the tabletop, I pre-drilled a hole in one corner and attached the first screw. Then I squared the top to the other side, drilled the hole, and attached it with a screw. Then I moved on to the remaining two corners. I added screws to the center and had to use a clamp to bring one of the sides into a line. Turning the cart over, I added some blocking for the casters. I made them out of scrap 2x4 cutoffs from the first step in the process. Once again, I pre-drilled the holes and attached them with deck screws. I then attached the casters by securing one corner onto the leg and then the other corners. I flipped it over 
and I tested it out. With the main carcass complete, I pivoted to making the sliding shelves. I started by cutting the shelf bottoms from 6mm Baltic Birch. I then cut the sides from 14mm Baltic Birch. I made the sides the same height as the stretchers to ease assembly later on. I then cut the stretchers to length using the measurements from the carcass. For better support and rigidity for the shelves, I added a rabbet on the sides to accept the bottom panels. I then glued and nailed the panels in place. I wasn't quite accurate enough with my brad nailer, so I had to remove some of the brads after the fact where they blew out on the side or the bottom. To keep the shelves from bowing, I added a back made from 14 millimeter Baltic birch. Once again, I added a rabbet to make assembly more easy, and I glued and used brad nails to attach. Once again, I was not terribly successful with the brad nailer and the thin stock so I had to cut off and remove many of the pins after the fact. Next, I moved on to the shelf slides. I drew a center line on the stretcher and used my pocket square to ensure the slides were flush with the front face. I also used my 651 square to ensure the slides were perpendicular to the face. I repeated the process on the other side as well. With the slides in place, I installed the shelves. Since the shelves were the same height as the stringers, to center the slide on the shelf, I just had to support the shelf from the bottom and screw it into place. Once I had the first screw in place, I slid the shelf out and secured the shelf with the remaining screws. With the shelves in place, I test fitted the machines, only to discover that the atom stack did not fit. It was too long. Never fear, I adapted and overcame by notching out the shelf and adding a small support bracket to the back. At some point in the future, I will make a new shelf with the proper length. And with that, the build was done. All right, well, that was the build video. I hoped you enjoyed it. It was so much fun to make this, even though I didn't necessarily expect this to happen for this particular video, it is what it is. Let's quickly run through some things that I like about this design and then talk about some of the things that I think I would change for the future. So right off the bat, dimensioning the lumber was the right choice. Having lumber that is true and it is square made the assembly go so much easier than working with raw dimensional lumber. Secondarily, having this thing on casters really works well for me and my workflow. I'm able to move it around in the garage or wherever it's for whatever home might end up being. And so having casters is definitely the way to go. Certainly having the shelves on sliders so you can slide them in and out like drawers is definitely a bonus for what I'm looking for out of this. I can slide the laser out, I can use it, and I can put it back into place. Having this big uh, flat work surface here, this three quarter inch plywood is definitely a bonus on the top as well. I think the Montour will fit well here on top. Pivoting into things that I think I would change first right off the bat. Obviously, if you watch the video, that lower shelf not being deep enough is something that needs to change. I think I'm just going to go ahead and rebuild a shelf. Use maybe even the same slides if I can, or if I can get some 24 inch slides for these so they can slide all the way out, that would be optimal. But that's the biggest thing that I think is the downside from this design. Other than I think maybe it's much deeper than I originally intended, I really thought that I could get it 24 inches deep, which will allow me to tuck it away a little bit more. But uh, what I ended up doing is the stretchers here are 24 inches. And so adding these two side pieces on the side made it about 30, 30 and a half inches or so deep. But uh, you know, so aside from those two little minor consequences, one of which was kind of a self-inflicted wound because I didn't measure properly. The other is just a design consequence. Other than those, this is almost the perfect solution that I was looking for for mounting these lasers. All right, well, if you like this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up if you didn't like the video. Well, I would ask for a thumbs up anyway. And you might consider watching one of these videos right here if they are of interest to you. All right, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for getting this far. And don't forget to be inspired.